Hey everybody, hope you all are doing well and are having a good semester over in Italy. I um, just want to make a quick video to kind of address some of your questions about this reference file that I made for all of you. Um, so, I understand there are some issues that people are having with actually using the reference file because currently when you select this, it's all grouped together as one mass within um, a single family. So it's not like super useful. Um, and I created this really quickly last year for the class that's ahead of you. And my intent was that they would just use this as a background and kind of draw new walls and stuff over it. But there are ways that you can use this um, a little bit more uh, to make your project in life a little bit easier. So I'm gonna show you really quickly how to make this a little bit easier for you to interact with. So what you can do is select the family and go ahead and edit this. Also, the reason that this is within a family is in order to have ability to select each element individually and also be able to control its material, um, I had to use a Rhino tool um, in combination with Grasshopper to bring this geometry in a certain way to allow for that. Um, and you can only import it into a family and be able to have the ability to control those things. So that's why it's in a family. Um, it still has to be in a family, but what we can do is copy this over into an in-place family, which is like a family that's directly within a Revit project and not actually loaded in externally. So what you should do once you open this, go ahead and click on a default 3D view. So just go up to the house here and then select everything in the viewport and copy it to your clipboard with this button. Okay, it's gonna take a second because it's a lot of data, but once that's done, go back to the project and then you can delete this out of the viewport. Actually, you might wanna leave it for, for a minute here. Um, I'm gonna paste this in. And again, I can't paste directly from a family to a project file, because if I do, Revit's gonna give this error. So what we have to do is instead create an in-place family, which is still technically a family. So Revit likes that. So we're gonna to go to model in place and then we're going to just choose the generic model category for now. Click OK, and then we can give this a name. Maybe it's just like uh, massing, for example. So we'll click OK, and then I can go ahead and paste this from the Modify tab. If we go to Paste, click on uh, Align to Curtain View. It's going to paste that in. Uh, it's a lot of data, so you got to give it a second. But then once that's pasted, we can click on finish model and that's going to kind of group everything together. Okay. So we'll give this one second. Okay, so once that's done, I'm going to grab this and move it based on a common corner. And I'm just gonna snap it to the exact same spot on my reference that I already have in here. Um, and then what I want to do is go into my list over here under families, and I wanna locate under generic models, uh, generic models right there. I wanna find this original family file that I had in here and delete that out because we don't need it anymore. So select it, hit delete. It's going to tell me it's going to delete the one out of the viewport and clear it out of the project. So we'll say okay. And that's going to get rid of it. So now we only have this one in place family. So anytime you want to interact with this in place family, all you have to do is go to edit in place. And that's going to kind of open up like the editor. Um, and then you can interact with all the components that are inside of this. So if I want to change the material of this wall, for example, I can select it and I can go to um, the material and I can set it there. All right. Um, anytime you want to add your own design elements, though, you're going to want to click on the finish model button and that's going to return your ribbon up here to the normal architecture tools because right now I can't draw any walls or anything within the in place family editor, right? I have to hit finish model and then go to the architecture button and then I can start drawing in my walls. 
Um, so the intent with this being a reference file is anything that you don't need, you can open the in place family editor and delete it. And then once you're done making those changes, go ahead and save it with the green check mark and then come here and actually start adding in your own custom design elements, right? All right, so to take this a step further, something you're gonna see immediately off the bat is because this is all one kind of big family all nested together in the same thing as a generic model, right? If I click on this, it's just one big generic model. Revit doesn't understand what's a wall, what's a window, what's a floor, right? So it has no way to change how those elements are being shown. So if we look at my wall, but it up to the import geometry, it's all drawn, all the import geometry is drawn the exact same, whereas the wall is drawn with a thicker border, right? So what you're going to want to do, if you're going to plan on reusing a lot of this geometry that's in here within your drawing sets, within your renderings, you'll want to go and edit this in place and cut each, each type of element out into its own family, right? So let's say I select all these walls right here, okay? And you would do this for every single wall that you want to show this way. So we're gonna select all these walls that I'm seeing right here in my immediate view. Okay, that's probably good, good enough. And we are going to hit Control X and cut them to our clipboard. Then we are going to finish model. Then we're going to go to architecture, create a new model in place component. This time though, we're gonna categorize this as walls. Okay, and then we will call this you know, you could do the interior walls and then the exterior walls separate, or if you just want to do all the walls at the same time, just call it walls, say okay, and then we can go to modify, paste, and then align to current view. And that's going to paste them in the exact same place, um, but now they'll be categorized as walls, so as you'll see when I finish this, it's going to draw at the correct thickness for the borders. Um, and then another thing that you can do for all these elements is let's say you want to make, let's say you want to make everything the same material. So I could select all this and then assign a family parameter for wall material, right? And then we can make that a type parameter and then say, okay. Um, but now in my family types, I get control over the wall material of all these at the same time, um, which is pretty nice. If you wanted to control the material of like an individual wall, let's say I want to put like a, um, a feature uh, or an accent material on this, this wall right here, I can not tie that to the wall material, just say none, and then I have individual control right here on what material goes on that wall, okay? so. That's how I would handle the materials. Anything that's kind of the same, group that together, give it its own parameter, all tied to the same thing, and then you have global control over like all of those at the same time. Anything that's gonna have a unique material, select it, make sure it's set to none here, and then just give that its own material right here directly. Okay, so when I finish this model now, um, and we look at it, now, because Revit knows that those are wall elements, it's going to draw with the correct line weights. And another cool thing is these will now react to the graphic override settings. So if I go to VV to pull up my graphic overrides and I scroll down to walls, underneath of the cut pattern, let's say I want that to fill in black in my floor plan. I can set this pattern here to a solid fill with color black and when I click OK and then apply that, it's going to draw all of those walls with a solid fill now as if they are native Revit walls, which is really cool. All right, so I would go ahead and cut everything that is supposed to be unique inside of this large mass 
to its own family. So you could do another one um, for the roofs, for example. So let's grab a couple of these roofs. All right. And you want to make sure that you get every piece because since this is a, a SketchUp import, sometimes the geometry is a little bit weird and you'll get some little, little floating edges here and there. So you want to make sure that you're, you know, not only just getting this top face, but then also the sides, stuff like that. Um, so then I can cut this out, control X, and just repeat the process. So we'll finish the model and then we will do another in place family and we're going to categorize that then as roofs so we'll find roofs in this list and we'll just call that roofs and then we can go to modify paste selected levels uh, we'll do level one and that's going to paste that in there so now Revit knows that these are roofs and, and you can give this a, a roof material, for example. And so now when I finish that edit in place, I can click on this roof, go here to edit type, and this is where my roof material exists. If I did that for the walls, wherever I, right there, I go to edit type and right there is my wall material that I had assigned and that's how I can that's how I can control the material of these without actually needing to go into the nested in place family right because I assigned that material parameter and linked it to the geometry I can now select that entire in place family hit its type properties and then I can assign the material right there Right, so it's gonna take a little bit of organization on your part in terms of going into the big mass and breaking it all out into its individual pieces. But once you do that, you'll end up with something that behaves very similar to just being a Revit native model um, because everything will then have its own category. You can control the materials of it um, and you can really kind of do whatever you want to it um, and it, it'll just act kind of based or act like you're expecting. So um, that's what I would do. And then if there's stuff in here that you don't need based on your specific design, just select it, edit the in place family and delete out whatever you don't need and build in what you do need. Okay. Um, so yeah, I think that's kind of your best way forward, but it's going to take some manual rework on your end to kind of get get this to that level functioning on that level um, and looking kind of the way that you're expecting another thing that I had um, some students say to me is there is a CAD file that goes along with this that they gave you all that maybe has some more detail or you know things added here and there in the plan I re would recommend just taking that CAD file and going to insert and then importing that directly into here and then um, overlaying it directly on top of this plan. So find a common point that aligns with this plan Al or uh, align the two together so you can see everything kind of in the same context and then build in manually whatever components are shown on that plan that are missing from this reference model. All right, I think that's going to be the easiest way for you to go about doing that. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I mean, this should work and this should um, this should work pretty well for you and hopefully save you a ton of time. So uh, let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to email me anytime about this. Uh, I understand the struggle of you guys in Italy. It's it's a challenge being in a different time zone and also having access to limited resources. Um, I know it's, it's, it's a little bit difficult this semester and it's hard to get the help you need. So if you need help, feel free to ping me as a resource and I will help you out wherever I can, you know, whether it's giving you suggestions on how you should go about building things or, you know, whatever, feel free to reach out to me through email. I'm always happy to reply to your emails and, and kind of help out, um, wherever I can. Um, but hopefully this video kind of answers the bulk of the questions. I've been getting a handful of emails 
that are all kind of asking the same thing. So I thought with this video, maybe this will help to clear up some of that confusion so that everybody's on the same page and not all asking me the exact same question. But if there's any unique questions, feel free to email me and ask me those and I can help you on an individual basis. Um, but yeah, let me know if you need anything else and uh, take care.